Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. You know, this was somewhat of a weird episode. Because in a lot of ways, I felt like, almost like with days in a sense, like they were stalling a little bit to get the Friday's cliffhanger. Sonny and Diane. I'm very curious about this scene because when Diane comes in and she tell you know she tells Sonny about Alexis being a person of interest and you know she may go to jail and everything like that and protecting her kids, yada 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 yada. She gets a little frustrated and she's like, Well, what are you gonna do about it? And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Did Diane, the lawyer who's representing Alexis, ask Sonny, what's your game plan for getting her out, out of this situation? Uh, last time I checked, I'm pretty sure that was your job. That's why they are paying you the big bucks. So why are you asking him now? Now, my only thing, because I'm already sitting up there just picturing the comments in my head. Only possible reason, because this is stupid. I'm just going to put down on record that that was a very acidine question. That the only thing that would make sense is a Hail Mary. To try to make this question not as stupid as it sounds. Is if she Smith is saying, I hope you don't plan on doing something that's going to, you know, kind of mess me up as far as trying to get her out of the situation. Like maybe your private judge or something like that. Like, I want to make sure you don't do anything stupid. Like, you know, like that sort of scenario. Because if that's not it, then this scene is not really making a lot of sense to me. Maybe this scene will make sense to you. You can tell me in the comment section below. And tell me if this scene makes sense to you. I, I, I really <laughs> want to try to make this make sense to someone because it's not doing anything for me. Now, Jocelyn comes over Michael's and is like, we got to sit there and snap some sense into mom because she's about to sit there and throw her life away for a man who has hurt her and abused her and X, Y, and Z. We can't do that. You know, Michael's just on the belief of, you know what, she's a grown-ass woman. She can sit there and um, kind of handle the situation. And, you know, Jocelyn's just like, this is not the type of energy that I want. I want us to be on the same page. Um, and then she talks about the alibi. You know, like, okay, maybe if they're not hooking up, then it's an alibi thing. And, you know, we, we, can't, we can't do that. Like, she just got out of charges. We can't. Like, we ought to do something. But the conversation turns into, you know, it gets to a point when they're talking about John. And, you know, Michael was just like, yo, listen. Pretty much, long story short, he pretty much describes him as a rabid animal that needed to be put down. And at first, she's like, so what are you sniffing, excusing murder? Now, she doesn't know the full picture why she's not there just babbling off a bunch of, you know, judgmental crap about human lives and everything like that, and just a lot of morality crap that I think as an adult, as an older adult, she'll understand that there's moments when there's gray areas before she starts talking about, like, like John's life was actually worth something. Um, and Michael was like, you do realize that she was going after Christina, right? She was going to charge Christina with the death of her own child. Now, I say that, and you just of uh, she could have always changed her mind. I know that there's still that whole debate, but um, you know, he he tells about you know all the harassment that that John was doing, and she was like, "Oh, I didn't know that." I was like, "Yeah, 
Maybe you should sit there and come to these conversations with a little bit more knowledge before you just start spewing off crap. But then it gets to a point where she starts asking Michael, how did you forgive Sonny? And he explains it. And she's like, you know, after everything he's did, after all the failures and everything like that, how could you do it? Because he's, he's older than you. He has more life experience than you. And he understands that there was some stuff that he did that kind of messed up the relationship. And, um, you know, as he explained it, you know, long story short, it was hurting him more by being angry at him and going after him than for me to sit there and forgive him. And, you know, sometimes in life, and I don't know if I'm ever going to get to this point, but I can try. Because sometimes you forgive people for yourself. Not for them, but for yourself. So this way you can move on, you can move forward. You don't carry that negative energy with you. Jocelyn's young. She doesn't understand stuff like that. So when she starts... With her being herself, pretty much, it's very young experience. And it can come across as kind of naive at times and a little irritating. Okay, so Sasha decided to throw a little brunch for the Scorpio family for no reason. No particular reason. It wasn't anyone's birthday. It wasn't Cody's birthday. She just surprised him with brunch for the family. Not really understand why we're doing that, but okay, fine. So they have the brunch and everything. James, I don't know what is it with these poor Charles kids where they just start saying things that they really shouldn't be saying, like violent. You know, and in this case, he's asking, oh, well, you know, could I sit there and spend a night at Cody's? Could I sit there and and, and sleep over at Cody's like Sasha does. And, you know, the grown-ups are just like... And, um... You know, it's just super awkward. And it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like... Y'all need to sit there and start raising these kids a little bit better. Because, like, James and Violet, there's just times where it's like, they'll say something and it's like... You, you, you really shouldn't be saying this. Meanwhile... Tracy is, Tra Tracy was just kind of all over the place, okay? One minute she's having a meeting with um, Natalia and Maxie and Brooklyn and Lois and that stupid accent or whatever way she's sitting there trying to twist her voice around and she has legit legitimate concerns. She's like, yeah, I get it, Sonny is an invest, you know, he's, he's an investor. But he's also a suspect in a murder, right? And that leaves the company vulnerable. We may have to sit there and talk about kind of, you know, kicking him and his money and everything like that to the side. Because if we don't, feds get wind of it. They can sit there and start checking to our books and stuff. It won't look good. Stock, you name it, it's just bad for the company. And these are legit concerns. And pretty much everyone else is like, well, you know, he wasn't charged with crime yet. So, um, yeah, I'll say he saves. Yeah, okay, that's, that's cool. It's like, they just kind of just brush it off. And they don't even really sit there and seem like they actually take her seriously. You know, they even make jokes like, oh, you know, she's just upset because, you know, Carly and Sonny was doing the nasty in her bed. It was like, yeah, that's a valid reason to be angry and upset. But this is legit about business. That y'all seem like y'all just like, no, no big deal. But Tracy did sit there and tell Natalia, talk to your boy Sonny, because, you know, the morality clause is there for a reason. And I read that like about twice or four times. So, um, yeah. So she goes over there. I mean, so Natalia goes to talk to Sonny. Then Tracy, and this is why I sit there and say she's just all over the place. One minute, she's fine. Next minute, she comes in, you know, their little brunch session or whatever, and just acts like a first grade A bitch for, like, no reason 
whatsoever. She goes in on Sasha. She's like, oh, well, you know, who told you to invite all these people and, you know, on our food and our dime and this, that, and the third. And I'm like, are you, are you serious? So everyone's sitting there looking at her. It's super awkward because you got kids that just sitting there. And finally, Mac is like, whoa, you have to calm that down a little bit. You know, nobody likes bullies at this point. Like, you're out of pocket, pretty much. And then it wasn't until James was like, you know what, listen, why don't you sit there and have some of my food? I know what it's like when I get hungry and I get angry. And he used the word hangry. And it's almost like there's a switch that goes off and Tracy just realizes that she was out of pocket and all this, all that attitude, all that bitchiness was completely unnecessary. So she's like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to go back in the living room or whatever and, and find something to eat or something in the kitchen. Now, I saw the previews. And um, I think Cody says something along the No, it was, I think it was either Mac talking to Felicia or somebody says something like, do you think that Tracy actually has a crush on Cody? Now, normally I sit there and take that stuff with a grain of salt. But I, I got to sit there and say, it, <clears throat> I wouldn't rule it out. That's all I'm going to sit there and, and say. I'm not going to rule that out. Um, plus, there's a point where Cody kind of puts Sasha on the spot and asks her to be her <clears throat> his, <clears throat> his girlfriend. And um, at some point, James, once again, is like, how come we don't want to be Cody's boy, um, girlfriend? Cody is super cool, and this time the third, I was like, James, you're not, you, you, you're not helping. I mean, I, I give you an E for effort as far as being a future wingman, but you, you just, you, you're not helping. Long story short, she says yes. Um, Cody thanks Mac for for sticking up for them, and you know they have that little full house moment. Okay, so this this conversation with Carly and Jason just all it boils down to is a couple of things because they were talking about random stuff, and I mean, like Bobby and Lila and matriarchies, and you know her trying to step up and and trying to help the family and really trying to look out for Lulu because the the premise the base of this conversation is that Carly told Jason that, hey, listen, I got Jack to sit there and help me out. Um, I'll do what I have to do to sit there and save Lulu's life, even if I got to work with the devil at this point. I don't care. And then, you know, in the beginning, I even wrote out that Carly was going to ask Jason to go to Africa to find Lucky. And then 20 to 40 minutes later, towards the end, she does. Now, of course, she's a little hesitant about it because, well, the last time that Jason went to go rescue someone, yada, yada, yada. We all know the real reason why that, you know, he was in the cave and, you know, he didn't make it. But for story purposes, she's just hoping that history does not repeat itself. But, you know, they need somebody like Jason to go down there to... Um, get lucky. Not Laura the mayor, not Kevin the shrink. A, a person who can actually has the skill set to do what needs to be done. So there's that. Um, <clears throat> I, I still think that Lois sounds stupid at this point. I really do. But uh, we're kind of stuck with it because. Um, I don't know, General Hospital does not not really understand humor and funny, and this is not... Humor is so funny, but, you know, we're kind of stuck with it, so, you know... Yeah, There's a point where Brooklyn is not there talking about children, and should she have children, and should she wait for children, and, you know, if they miss their window, and long story short, she's deciding to have children with Chase. Yeah, that's, that's about it. And then there's a conversation with Natalia telling Sonny about the news about the morality clause and John 
the investigation and how, you know, he could be kind of kicked out as far as being an investor. But, you know, Sonny's kind of preoccupied with, you know, Christina, all the trauma she's going through, um, and the mother of his child, of his other child being, you know, um, a person of interest. So, you know, long story short, it's like, yeah, that's important, but he got much more immediate important things that he is thinking about at that point in time. And that's pretty much about it. Now, tonight, I'm not going to be doing a live stream, but I will be back doing it tomorrow. That is 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And tomorrow, we'll be sitting there talking about all the shows, General Hospital, Days of Our Lives, Born and Beautiful Young and, Mes and the Wrestlers. Now, if I forgot anything, write it down in the comment section below. And we'll talk about today's episode and tomorrow's episode in tomorrow's live stream. Um, with that being said, I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next video.